I just wish we could all get along like we used to in middle school. I wish I could bake a cake made of rainbows and smiles and we could all eat it and be happy. With mainstream appeal, major promotions across the world showcasing an array of styles and a thriving independent scene, there's never been a better time to be a wrestling fan. But because fandom can't exist without tribalism, there'll always be a raging debate over which is the best thing. I love this, says player one. You are less clever than me, replies player two, copy and paste to everything ever. However, very occasionally we can have nice things as promotions come together to share their resources and put on a show that feels extra special and lives long in the memory. I'm Dan Hailing from Parts Fun Known and these are the 10 greatest cross-promotional matches ever. Number 10, Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega, Wrestle Kingdom 12. Now, there is some debate in the office as to whether this is or isn't cross-promotional. Technically, Jericho wasn't under WWE contract at the time, but given that he'd spent nearly two decades performing under the WWE umbrella, seeing a man who had previously stated he'd never wrestle for anyone other than Vince McMahon walk into the Tokyo Dome was quite something. Challenging for the IWGP United States Championship, Jericho gave himself a new nickname for the occasion. Alpha vs Omega was video game billing for a match that at one stage felt like it could only ever happen in a video game. And then the match went and lived up to the hype. A brutal contest as much about personal grudge as finding the real best in the world. Watching it feels like a bridge between two eras, a face of the old guard squaring up to a face of the new, especially when we think about what happened in wrestling next. A five-star banger, the importance of this match can't be understated. Not only did it bring a lot of new eyes to the Japanese product, it was also another milestone on the path to a revolution in North American wrestling that led to the creation of AEW. Number 9. Shinsuke Nakamura vs Kevin Steen Ring of Honor New Japan War of the Worlds 2014 a supercard from a time when we still called streaming events iPay-per-views, the partnership between Ring of Honor and New Japan had the wrestling world abuzz after one of arguably the most creatively frustrating years in the history of mainstream American wrestling. And the War of the Worlds card more than delivered. I could have picked from a number of contests here. How do you fancy Adam Cole defending the ROH title against Jushin Actual Thunder Genuine Liger? Perhaps you'd like to partake in some AJ Styles against Michael Elgin and Kazuchika Okada for the IWGP title. But the one I've picked is Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Kevin Steen, now Owens, in large part because it was after this match that Steen announced he'd be leaving Ring of Honor and would soon sign his developmental deal with WWE. So going back to watch it, with both men now prominent members of the Monday Night Raw roster having achieved varying degrees of success in the quote-unquote big leagues over the years, gives it a little feathered edge of hindsight. And the match, wrestled in front of a New York crowd, is a brilliant showcase of two stars sitting on the edge of a much-needed sea change in the industry. Number 8. Art Bar and Eddie Guerrero versus Octagon and El Hijo de Santo when worlds collide. This is not only an outstanding match, it's also an opportunity for me to correct a past misdeed. When Worlds Collide is an unbelievable show that's notoriously hard to find a copy of. And back in 2004, while I was training at NWA UK Hammerlock, a chap named Tad gave me his copy because I wanted to learn more about being a smaller man in the ring. To make a long story short, the school moved and I wasn't able to go anymore. It's now 20 years later and Tad, if you're watching, I have taken that VHS with me everywhere I've ever lived, and if we should ever meet again, I will gladly hand it back to you to release me from my crushing guilt. Anyway, WCW and AAA came together to produce the Mexican promotion's first show to be broadcast in the US and open a lot of American eyes to the superhero athletics of the Lucha Libre style. A pristine gem on an all-time great card, this match is contested in two out of three falls rules, where both men had to pin or submit for the fall to become official, which adds a brilliant extra wrinkle to the drama. I love tag teams, I love Lucha Libre, I love these wrestlers, I love this match. Number 7. Great Suzuki, Gran Hamada, and Masato Yakushiki vs. BWO Japan, ECW Barely Legal, 1997. Another one that caused a chin wag in the office, but fully worthy of inclusion on this list. In 1997, for their very first pay-per-view, ECW decided to hand a decent chunk of time to a match showcasing an entirely different promotion. Very in keeping with the scrappy-do nature of the Land of Extreme, Michinoku Pro Wrestling was Japan's plucky upstart, an underdog promotion just five years old, making their base outside of the established Tokyo market. The two promotions were a perfect match, and giving space on their show to highlight the Japanese stars helped ECW show themselves as an intriguing alternative product to the two major North American promotions. The crowd are also really up for it, filling the ring with streamers before the opening bell in a fantastic visual, which when followed by the match itself, could almost be seen as a precursor for a style that would flood the indie scene in the turn of the century. It's well worth seeking out, and it absolutely flies by. The perfect example of what a showcase match should be. Number six. The 
Undertaker vs. Jinsei Shinzaki, 1997. A delightful curiosity, this comes from the brief period in 97 where Vince McMahon decided to, you know, acknowledge other countries exist. WWF struck up a partnership with the fledgling Michinoku Pro Wrestling, and part of that deal saw a talent exchange, with Great Suzuki and Taka Michinoku appearing stateside, while the dead man used his under-the-ring teleportation device to visit the land of the rising sun. Prior to the contest, Shinzaki had been unalived by the Great Muta, so he's wrestling here to try to reclaim his soul. He's brought to the ring by Japanese pallbearers, no not that one, and when the bell rings his lifeless body stirs and he rises to his feet, his gear covered in blood. The spectacle of the dead man in a Japanese ring is a sight to behold, especially while he's here playing an actual Grim Reaper, which is very cool, and Shinzaki is fully leaning into the zombified version of himself. When the match is over, Undertaker walks slowly to the back and Shinzaki is returned to the site of his grave to be entombed forever. As a match, honestly, it's fine, but as a piece of theatre, it's utterly thrilling. Number 5. Kenny Omega vs Rich Swan, Impact Rebellion 2021 A shining star in one of the darkest times for professional wrestling, and of the world, but who needs reminding, this is another example of two upstart promotions pooling their resources to draw more eyes on their products and showcase the best of what they have to offer. The story was that Omega was Don Callis' boy, and he brought him over to continue his run as the belt collector, to let him drape himself in more gold than a man named Terry playing darts in an Irish pub in Benidorm. I'm gonna be a basic fanboy here, but this is cool because it's Kenny Omega holding the AEW Championship in Impact, and then he gets that belt as well, so the man has both belts, Mauro Ronaldo is calling the action, which makes everything better, I-M-H-O, Mamma Mia, and it ends up being the most watched pay-per-view in Impact for years. The whole Forbidden Door thing became cliche really quick, and then naming an annual show after it fully undercuts the, oh no, there's no way around the pun, Impact, but this is an example of something where you want to stop and rub your eyes to make sure you're seeing what you think you're seeing. And we don't get enough of those, so it's on the list. Number four, Taz vs. Mike Awesome, ECW 2000. At this stage, we all know the story. It's fabled in wrestling history, but a WWE guy beating a WCW guy in an ECW ring during the apex of professional wrestling is every bit as juicy as it sounds. After being stiffed for a sum of money rumored to be in the $50,000 range, WCW made the ECW champion Mike Awesome Awesome, an offer he simply couldn't turn down. But of course, because fiscal responsibility and providing for one's family is the biggest heel work of all time, the ECW faithful turned right on him and blasted him as a sellout. But never fear, here comes Taz to save the day and defend ECW's honor. Never mind that he'd left ECW for a lucrative WWE contract a few months earlier, he's not a sellout. That's not logical inconsistency. Don't look at me, EC Dub. It's a brilliant bit of wrestling history and a reminder that when the wrestling industry is well populated, it's better for everyone. Everyone. Number 3. Brian Danielson vs Minoru Suzuki, AEW Rampage A dream match if ever there was one, and available for free on YouTube. Madness. In one corner, you have arguably the most beloved star of our generation. On the other, you have a proper legend, a pioneer in the art form, and someone who appears to bathe in the fountain of youth, up to his forehead. That was a cheap joke, and I'm sorry. Danielson has trouble keeping the smile off his face at many points. His style from day one was heavily inspired by the Japanese way of working, and Suzuki is one of the best the country has to offer. It's an exquisite piece of fan service from AEW, and those in the building are all too happy to play their part, and they get rewarded for doing so by a match that is in every sense of the phrase, a clash for the ages. Finish this list off, watch 12 more of our lists, and then go and find it and enjoy yourself, I simply dare you. Number 2. Hulk Hogan vs The Great Muta, 1993 Now then, we're all familiar with Hulk Hogan, walrus moustache, confusing haircut, point, listen, pythons. But can I introduce you to the concept of Hulk Hogan in Japan? Wrestling always seemed to take a back seat to the vitamins and the prayers and the America of it all with 80s icon Hogan, but something about the Japanese air seemed to bring a clarity to Hulk, who had a notable career on the islands long before he first stepped foot in the WWE ring. After stealing Bret Hart's thunder at WrestleMania 9, WWE in New Japan came to a rare accord that allowed Hogan to take on the Great Muta in a champion versus champion clash, and Hogan busted out a genuinely brilliant encounter befitting of both stage and opponent. Look, he's not doing 6.30 shooting star presses and Panama sunrises off the apron, although let's take a second to enjoy the mental image of that, but still, it's pretty fun, almost as fun as the press conference he does after the match, taking a red and yellow piss all over the WWE title in front of the entire Japanese wrestling media, but that's a story for another list. And number one, Kenny Omega vs Will Ospreay, Wrestle Kingdom 17. 
It's borderline unfair for these two to have two genuine classics that could have made this list in the space of six months, but I like my lists to have balance, and since this is Omega's third spot on this one, I've picked their first clash in the Tokyo Dome for the IWGP United States Championship. This match had a hell of an uphill struggle going in, two men whose very names have become bywords for quality, facing off at New Japan's biggest showcase. It's a mark of their brilliance individually and their chemistry together that they met the moment in such spectacular fashion. On top of their reputation, the pair had been each other's throats online for years in the lead-up, so anything short of a masterpiece would leave baying fans feeling a little disappointed. But when the bell rang and the boiling point tension spilled over, a half-hour marathon played out with brilliant psychology and face-clutching brutality to deliver a match of the year just four short days into January. Because time is a cruel mistress that relentlessly marches on, we're edging closer to the time when everyone starts putting together their best of 2023 lists. So, Smart Money has this one cropping up a lot, and I dare you to disagree. And that's our list. It's far from exhaustive, and lists of these kind are supposed to be celebrations of the thing we all love. So, pop your favourites in the comments below, and while you're at it, like and subscribe, and go and watch one of our other lists. Might I recommend this one? Now then, last week we made a list of the best No Mercy matches ever, and it was really good. Mark Markerson gave it 18 stars. The surprising thing about No Mercy, however, is there are so many bangers, which is good, but what that meant was my honorable mentions category could have been a list in its own right. To that end, and because I like nice things, shout out to Edge and Christie and Rock and Jericho, Austin.